Hello and welcome to Ionic Tips Weekly, episode 8, uh, the weekly Ionic show where we take a look at one small tip each week to try and become better Ionic developers. This week we're going to look at conditionally binding to classes, attributes and styles. And so what I've done here is I've just got this uh, test application set up with a few different components on here. And we're just going to play around with these uh, using these conditional bindings. And so what I mean by that is that, uh, say for example, with the, the toolbar here, we could assign this, say, a color of uh, primary. And if we save that, that's going to change the toolbar color. Uh, but that's not really what I want to talk about specifically. Uh, what I want to do is discuss how we can give this a dynamic value, a controller in some way with a value in our class here. So let's say I wanted to define the value for this uh, color attribute here. I want to define that in here. So I might say uh, public color and it's going to be a string. And let's say we want the, the danger string for now. And so having this defined in here, uh, we could use this as a way to perhaps have some uh, class we use to de define various things in our application. Uh, or maybe we want to set this dynamically. Uh, having it defined here means we could you know, run some code uh, that's going to change that. Maybe you know, we'll let the user uh, select the color or something like that. Uh, but basically what we can do, if we uh, surround this attribute with square brackets, uh, we can then assign this variable to that. So this variable is just called uh, color. Uh, maybe we'll just call it toolbar color to be more specific. So if I now set this to toolbar color instead of primary, it's going to use whatever value is uh, on this variable here. So it should be the danger uh, value and we can see it's using the danger color now. And so there's other useful uh, attributes we could bind to, uh, say on the ion button, for example. Uh, so perhaps if you have a, a form you want the user to submit, maybe that's getting sent to a server, maybe you're doing some validation. Uh, what we can do is use the disabled attribute to disable the button and maybe we want to do this dynamically. Uh, maybe we only want it disabled whilst uh, the button has been clicked and the form is currently processing. Uh, so then, uh, for example, you can just say, you know, give it the disabled attribute like this. And if we go back into the application, now you can see that button, it's grayed out and we can no longer click on it. But to make this dynamic, uh, instead we could Again, just like we did with the uh, toolbar here, uh, surround that with square brackets and then assign it a variable rather than a value. So maybe we'll just give this a, a button disabled variable here and then we'll have to set this up as well. And we'll set that to a Boolean, which will be, uh, we'll say it's uh, true. So if we go back into the application again, when it reloads, this should still be uh, disabled. Uh, but now perhaps, you know, we'll have some method that's handling the form submission and maybe we, we change this to false uh, whilst that is happening or rather we will change, we'll change it to true while it's happening. Uh, it'll be false when the form is not submitting. And you can see once we change that to false, we can see that the button is now clickable again. Uh, you can also bind to attributes uh, using this syntax. Uh, so you can bind to various things actually, but for attributes we'd use ATTR dot uh, whatever the attribute is. Uh, so let's say if we wanted to bind to the checked attribute for toggle, we could also do ATTR dot check. And then again, we'd set that to uh, some variable. So maybe we'd set up one called toggled. And so right now that's untoggled. But if we set up a class member here, we'll set toggled as a boolean and we'll set it to true. Actually, I think that I yeah, spelled that wrong. It should be attribute.checked uh, like that. Okay, you can see that's uh, toggled now. And just to check, we'll switch this to false. Jump back in here and now it's um, unchecked or untoggled. And so it's not just uh, attributes that we can bind to, we could also bind to a class, for example. Uh, so for more uh, uh, complex class conditions, you can also use uh, something called ng class. But if you just want to simply bind or unbind a single class, then it is easy just to use this same sort of uh, binding syntax here. And so I've got a, a class set up. 
which increases the font size. I've just, I've just called it massive. And so what we can do is just like this one, we can bind to class.massive and then we just set that to some Boolean value. So I'll just set up another uh, Boolean called massive. We'll create this in here. So public massive Boolean equals true. And so now when this refreshes, we should have a large uh, font size here because the massive class is being applied to this paragraph. And again, if I just switch that to false, uh, it's going to remove that, uh, that class, so it removes the styling. And just as one more example, I've got this ion card set up here and we're going to uh, change the style dynamically. And this isn't something I really, uh, I don't know if I ever use this really, but I just want to show you that it's possible. Uh, generally, I prefer to set up class rather than binding to a, a style property directly, uh, but you can bind to styles uh, through style dot and then the name of whatever style uh, you want to use. So uh, in uh, CSS, we would use uh, all the styles are in this sort of uh, hyphenated format, like background color. Uh, in the code here, we actually need to use a camel case. So basically you just convert whatever the normal CSS property is, just convert that to camel case like this. Remove the, remove the hyphen and capitalize uh, the second word there. So now we're, uh, we're binding to style.backgroundColor. And again, we can just set that equal to some variable. Uh, we'll call this card color. So now once again, if I come into here, I'll set up a variable called card color. That'll be a string. And we'll set that equal to, uh, we'll just say yellow. So I'll save that, jump back in here. And you can see we now have a yellow card. And once again, we could change this to whatever we wanted, change that to red. Uh, it's going to make the card red. Okay, so that's it for the uh, tip for this week. Uh, as always, if uh, you did enjoy this video, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, it helps out a lot. And you can find my Twitter and blog and things like that in the description if you're after more uh, content. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week.